Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm good. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Where do you fellowship here or you fellowship somewhere else? At Wellspring. I think there's a better way to do this though. There is? What's that way? Which way do you do it? I, I guess I would just, I would feel like it would put it like, maybe like rent a space or somewhere more professional because a lot of people I know, like one I know that is Christian and she got an abortion and like, you know, I agree that it's wrong, but a lot of people will feel condemned and they won't want to come if this is like the first thing they see. Versus if you if you try to find out more about them and who they are and then teach them about like forgiveness and then why it matters, that that would, that would work for no, no doubt, that's all part of it. Part of the grace is about it, but they must understand rightly what they've done. And if you've got a relationship with this friend, then when this comes up, because we've exposed it, because the Bible tells us that we need to expose it, you know what Ephesians 5.11 says? It says, have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And we're called to be salt and light, right? You know, you've heard that, you know, don't hide your light under a bushel. You know, what, what good is salt? You know, if it, if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, you just throw it out and be trampled underfoot. Yeah. And so we're called to be salt and light. So if you've got a relationship and you see something like this or she sees something like this and she's upset, that's when you go to her and go, no, what, what they're doing is right. And this is why it needs to be exposed. But yeah, I just feel like you guys should also have signs that say, like, you can still be, be forgiven. Oh, amen. Right there. Yes. Right there across the street, my wife. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's absolutely. The gospel's the solution. So we, we live in a, in a society that is so full of deception that we say, well, God is full of love. God is love. God is love. God is love. But we don't look at the wrath of God, right? Yeah. Does God have wrath? Yeah. Does God hate? He hates darkness, yeah. But well, he also wishes all be saved. He, his will is that men be saved, yes. But... For those that will not repent, for those that do not turn away from the things of this world, they stand condemned already. You know, everybody wants to quote John 3.16, right? Yeah. So God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him might be saved. What's 3.18 say? Uh, uh, I remember, okay, hold on. No, no, that's look fine. Go ahead, look it up. You know, well, I remember because I was just at the Racial Possible and I was studying it in another language. Yeah, look it up, okay. please. What language? What uh, language? What language? I don't know the exact name of it, but it's a like Guatemalan language. Oh, right on. Because uh, it's kind of a, a we, Mexican or South American. Yeah, we were working uh, with Wycliffe, though, the Bible translator. Right on. So, yeah. So I was more focused on trying to remember that than the. Who's at Wellspring? Is that Rob? Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. You know Rob? Yes, I okay. used to I used to teach youth at, at Hughcrest. So what's what's three eighteen say? And he was not judged. He does not believe in judge already because he's not believed in the name of only begotten. Right. So if you don't believe, if you don't do what Christ has commanded us to do, which is to repent, then you stand condemned already. And we live in a culture, and I do this a lot. I stand out on the corner a lot, and I get lots of Christians going, "God is love. You can't do this. You can't do this. God is love." And I'm going, "No, God is not just love. God is love, but God is not just love. God is a God of wrath. God is a God of grace." Well, I think that the wrath also is that God can only be in light, but his wrath is is definitely real, but it's more because he loves you. Like, he doesn't want you just to not sin to be good. He wants you to not sin because he loves you. Amen. And so, yeah. I just, Amen. It's because we love him, though, because he, he tells us in First John. If you hate your brother, how can you love me, right? Yeah. He says you will know them because you love your brother. And so we love our brothers and sisters in Christ. We, we enjoy having these conversations. We want to be able to challenge people. But we also must understand the rest of the context of the Word of God. You know, in Proverbs 6, he says, I hate these things. Six things I hate, seven are an abomination to me. The hands that shed innocent blood, a lying tongue. I mean, all these things are an abomination to God. And if they're an abomination to God, then we as Christians need to stand up and rightly say, you know, God hates these things. Revelation 21.8 says, All those liars, thieves, fornicators will find their place in the pit of hell, the place that burns with fire. And, and so we go back to 1 Corinthians 6, 9, when Paul's talking. And he goes, you guys were fornicators, you're homosexuals, you're liars, you're thieves. He goes, such were some of you. So we know that there's redemption, but they must know that God hates those things. God loves little kids, right? 
he's got to hate fornicators. He's got to hate pedophiles. If he loves little kids, he's got to hate pedophiles. If he, if he loves women, he's got to hate rapists. It, it doesn't work both ways. So we got to rightly divide the Word of God and rightly understand. So when we come out like this, we're exposing an injustice in our culture. We're exposing an injustice in our society so that those that do have relationships, like if you have a relationship with your girlfriend and you know that she's done these things, see, no Christian can murder their child. No Christian, no born-again believer in Christ. You know what it means to be born again? What does it mean to be born again? Well, that's when you find Christ and like you find out like what He's done for you and redeemed you back to the way God wants things to be. So since He like He not only died on the cross but He rose again, right. you have that chance to walk in the way that God right. originally intended. So how how does a person get born again? Um, you let Christ sanctify you, yeah. and you read God's word because a lot of people they try to live their life and then apply God's word to it, but you should read God's Word and then make sense of your life through that. Because you're a new creation. The Holy Spirit has come and dwelt within you. John 3, if you read the first part of John 3, it talks about you know the religious leader that came to Jesus. And he goes, you need to be born again in order to see eternal kingdom. And the religious leader goes, well, how can a man get born again? You can't go back inside your mother. He didn't understand it. But what, what he's talking about is you'll get a new heart, new thoughts, new ways, new ideas. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells with you so that you no longer live in these things. So a born-again believer in Christ that has a Holy Spirit dwelling in them cannot murder, yeah. cannot do these things. I'm just worried because, like, I think it's right that we expose stuff. I just, I don't know. Like, I met a guy who was an anti-abortionist. He was an apologist. And he went and, you know, he did this. But uh -huh. the thing is, like, he did it more, he went to school functions or this or that less right. than, rather than, like, sitting out in the street where someone... Because if someone sees that when they're driving by, they're going to see that it's wrong, but they're going to run away because they're going to not That's dead. not necessarily true. See, because only the people that come to God that hear Him, right? My children hear my voice. My it sheep hear... to be with hear, all gentleness. Right. And we do come. I've been gentle. I'm gentle with everybody that comes. But we have to expose wickedness. See, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, what did He say in Matthew 23? He says, you guys do all these religious things. You tithe your dill, mint, and cumin. You do those things. But what I require from you is justice and mercy. Do the former, but do not neglect the latter. And see, Jesus condemned them because they didn't care about justice in the land. And we're in that same land today. We want to go to church. We want to help people. We want to do these things. But these babies are being murdered. And we just go, eh. You know, we don't really care about the justice of God. We, we just want to keep doing our things. And I used to be in that spot because I know. I came from that spot that I taught youth group. Um, <clears throat> I went to, on missions trips. I helped the Nez Perce Indians. You know, I, I did these religious type things. And in Amos 5, he calls us out. He goes, keep your new moon festivals. Keep your Sabbath worships. Keep your songs. Keep your instruments. What I desire is obedience in, and justice. In, uh, in Isaiah 1 and Isaiah 10, Isaiah 1, he says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. I want to see an obedient people. He sent the Jews into captivity. Why? Because they did the same things that the nations around them did. They started sacrificing their children to the god Molech, putting them on the altar. We're in that spot today. And I worry about youth, your age. I worry about your children. I worry about those that I take care of. Because I know that as we grow up in a society and as culture says, what we're doing is okay, you guys shut up. You Christians go to your church buildings, you shut up. You, you have your, your private spot. You don't go to the street corner and preach what God told us to preach like Paul did, or like Peter did, or like James did. You guys, shh. You guys go to your boxes. And we can't do that. Jesus says, go to all the world, right? Proclaim my name. Making disciples, teaching them all that I have commanded. So Wycliffe is great. We love Wycliffe. Go, go interpret the word in, in, in languages that are, but don't stop preaching the gospel. Make sure that people understand rightly what it means to live under the grace of God because every day we wake up, right? And it's the grace of God that we wake up to. Whether you're evil or whether you're a God-fearing man, God's grace falls on all of us. But in the end, 
when God's grace runs out, when I might not wake up tomorrow, when the gentleman that passed down this road today that stopped to argue with me because he saw my sign, that he doesn't wake up tomorrow, but he heard the gospel and he had a chance to repent, when that man understands the grace of God, that's what we're after. Because again, his children, his children hear his voice and respond. We know that not every man is going to be saved. Did the man walk away still mad? There's lots of people that walk away mad, but there's also lots of people that come and just rejoice and are glad. I've had men break down in tears in front of me, understanding their sin rightly. I've had women that have had abortions that come up to me and they're just in tears and going, man, I, I, I've been forgiven for one abortion, but I haven't been forgiven for the other. And I was like, ma'am, it doesn't work that way. God, God will forgive you as far as the east is from the west. Should you repent, God, the, that abortion is gone. He doesn't see it no more because he sees the blood of his son. And so when you repent, but repentance is this. Repentance is asking forgiveness for what we've done wrong and then acting accordingly. So you're going down the path this way and you repent and you turn around and you follow after God. And if you repented, if you truly repented, you got forgiveness for your sins. But then you act accordingly. You oppose the things that God hates. And so this woman, it was great because I was standing in the middle of a fair and uh, these people kept coming up to me and they're just going, You're, you can't be here, you can't show kids this, you can't do this, you can't do that, you need to go somewhere else. And this woman, this comes up to me and she goes, you can't be here because you don't have a uterus and you're not a woman and you can't, but ma'am, I'm, I'm a man and I'm supposed to, to look out for the weaker. It says, whatever you've done for the least of these, you've done for me is what Jesus says, right? And so she's just giving it to me about, I'm a man and I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. This woman that had these abortions, she comes up and grabs my sign and holds my sign. And she goes, I've had two abortions. How about me? Can I talk to you about this? That right there, that's repentance. And, and so it's, it's great things that we get to see. And yeah, there's a lot of hate out there, but we don't hate back. We love them. We want them to hear the word of God rightly. And then we, we cherish young women like you that if you've had friends and they've had abortions that you need to proclaim the word of God to them. If you've got this relationship and going, man, if you've had this abortion, I want you to understand the God that created the universe, man, he is awesome and he will forgive you for those sins. But you can't continue in those sins. If you're fornicating, stop. If you're having abortions, stop. If you're lying, stop. Don't stop because you think it's gonna make you a place in heaven, but stop because you love God. Right? That's why we stop. Because we say we love God, we shouldn't be doing these things. So, that's why we're here. Here, let me give you that. Read that later. And abolish human abortion. The website's on there. We're abolitionists. We're not pro-lifers. We stand upon the precepts of God. The, the uh, pro-life movement does not stand on the precepts of God. So, we are abolitionists of human abortion, just like in the days of slavery. So, we come to challenge... Um, our fellow believers because I was just like you about three years ago maybe four years ago now but I was just like there's crazy people standing on the corner that's 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 insane why would people ever do that they're gonna just chase people away but when we read John 3 18 properly we understand they're already condemned they're not gonna come to a church to, to see Christ there are no seekers well we want to believe there's seekers but the Bible says no nobody seeks God not one It says none are righteous no not one and so we proclaim the gospel so that we can get people into the body of Christ, not into a church. So, what's your name? Uh, Whitney. Whitney, I'm Sean. Hi. And this is my, my great grandnephew, Vincent. My wife's across the street with, uh, again, we've got all kinds of different signs um, with uh, what's going on in our culture. Um, that baby right there was pulled out of a dumpster in Texas. That's how wicked we are. And then my wife's got the, you know, there's new life in Christ sign and I've got a couple more, but I just don't have enough people to hold them all. I got a dozen signs. I just don't have enough people to hold them all. So the Lord is, is moving and he is, uh, he's stepping up on this, uh, this abolitionist movement that we're doing and we're seeing Christians rise, um, more and more and more and more. So, um, I forgot cause I have to go home soon, but how do you know Rob again? Um, I used to be a youth pastor and, uh, I, at Hewcrest. And I met all the youth pastors there, and uh, I spoke at a at a youth event oh four years ago. I want to say now. So do you still see him and stuff? Um, I'm friends with him on Facebook. I don't see him very much. Um, we run in kind of different circles, 
but uh, I hope to be over there doing this at some point um, so they might so the people in the church might rightly understand um, what it means to stand up we got to show people what it means to stand up no longer are we gonna go like this oh the culture they, they can kill their babies but I I won't do it but if they want to do it we can't do that no more God says no go to the world teaching them all that we teaching them all my commandments so we need to be obedient to that calling as well as the rest of, of Scripture. So, okay. Lord bless you. Thank you for stopping and talking. Thank so, you. talk to my wife over there. Give her a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right on. <laughs>